For this mission, it took Sam Fisher a few extra months to infiltrate the PlayStation 2, but when he finally got there, it was well worth the wait. This is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow, the second entry in Ubisoft's popular stealth series. For the uninitiated, it's a game of espionage, black ops, sneaking through the shadows, all the necessary ingredients for a nice game of hide-and-go-kill-someone. <laughs> Originally released in March 2004 for the Xbox, Pandora Tomorrow wouldn't become available for the PS2 until that fall. And while technical sacrifices were made in the move to Sony's platform, Pandora Tomorrow arrived on PS2 with a few benefits as well. Ubisoft threw in plenty of exclusive extras, including a few new routes, booby trap disabling, and even an all-new mission. Obviously, given the hardware discrepancies, the PS2 version simply can't compete with the Xbox version from a visual standpoint. The edges are more jagged, the colors are less vibrant, and that does have an effect on some of the level design. But in terms of content, at least, there's not much of a drop-off at all. In fact, if anything, you're gaining a little bit with this version, and that's a nice compromise for PS2 owners. In terms of its narrative, Pandora Tomorrow is typical Tom Clancy. Terrorist threats, military operations, exactly the kind of politically driven fiction that fills the pages of his novels. And whether you view his plots as paranoid or pragmatic, Pandora Tomorrow puts you right in the middle of one, and for the purposes of hiding in the shadows in hostile foreign territories, it works pretty well. <laughs> Armed with catastrophic biological weapons, Indonesian militants have the United States at their mercy. And yet, for all their elaborate planning, political manipulating, and doomsday strategizing, they made one critical error. They forgot to turn on the lights. Playing as Splinter Cell's gravel-throated protagonist, Sam Fisher, your job is pretty simple. Use stealth, work unseen, carry out your missions, save the world. You control Fisher from a third-person perspective through the game's dark and shadowy environments, doing everything you can to stay out of sight. Now, obviously, there's an inherently methodical pace to games like this, and if you're not a stealth fan because of that, this one isn't going to change your mind. Pandora Tomorrow forces you to move with utmost patience and deliberation, as being seen generally means you failed the mission. And at its core, that's what this game is all about, figuring out how to stay unnoticed and using plenty of trial and error to do so. If you're a gamer of the gutsy, ambushing, grab the shotgun and dominate variety, Sam Fisher's slow pace will probably put you to sleep, but if you enjoy the pacing and mood of a sneaky stealth game, you'll absolutely love Pandora Tomorrow. That is, provided you haven't played the Xbox version first. As I've mentioned, there are a few differences between this version and the Xbox original in terms of level design, and that has everything to do with hardware limitations. Uh, there's a bit less detail in the levels on PS2. They just tend to feel stiff compared to their Xbox counterparts, and although this is an outstanding PS2 release in its own right, that's one area in which it is lacking compared to its Xbox cousin. Still, this game was a big hit even on the PS2, and for good reason. It has an excellent campaign mode, and when the servers were still running, it also had some surprisingly innovative and compelling online multiplayer. A feature that is obviously long since expired, but what hasn't is the thrill of hunting in the shadows for terrorists who don't even see you coming. And that's what the great Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow is all about. What the hell? Stage one, Sam, don't be detected. Be careful, Fisher. Stealth skills are crucial for this operation. 